check the tires, check the oil, and I've fueled up with pretzels and science and sport drink mix to bring you my initial review of the New Balance 1080 V10. So many a running YouTuber has reviewed this one already, so I need to make sure I put the unique Ed Bud stamp onto this review. I've actually ventured out twice in these flashy looking daps or plimps holes or whatever you want to call them. Efforts were a six mile session at seven minutes 45 per mile and then a fartlek session where I ranged between about 7.45 and seven minute per mile paces. So let's get into the review straight away. Initially on foot, this one feels somewhat strange. We'll start with the upper first. It reminds me a lot of several different shoes really mulched into one. Actually, the Pegasus 35, I think actually aesthetically, it kind of looks a little bit like that. But in terms of the upper, it's certainly quite breathable. It's certainly kind of stretchy up in the toe box area. Across the top of the forefoot even, it kind of feels a little bit reminiscent of that shoe to me. I think it's something to do with the tongue. The tongue's very, very similar to that on the Pegasus 35. That toe box is very, very soft. It's very sort of plush feeling. Almost a sock-like kind of feel right across the forefoot. Inside the shoe, actually the tongue's kind of held on with these two elasticated pieces. Very similar, in fact, to the Takumi Sen 6 that I gave you my initial review for a couple of weeks ago. Apparently the upper is made of hyperknit, which sounds like some unique fringe or niche knitting technique that my wife might use. It's very flexible, but yet still supportive, um, especially around the ankle section here. I felt it nicely supportive and it's sort of almost cupping my heel. That heel area is made of this sort of almost felt kind of like material. It sort of feels like something you might buy like at a craft store or something. I certainly think this shoe's very stylized. It's certainly got a lot of character about it. I think I really like it aesthetically, although some people will probably want a more toned down version. My daughter liked these pink kind of highlights around the top of the midsole area. I think I'm inclined to agree with that. It looks like it's kind of been sprayed with this kind of light gradient kind of paint. It just sort of filters down through from the upper here. She also liked the sort of larvary bits here. Back to it now, come on. I'm getting distracted. I'm digressing. The upper has several sections of this knit. It's all slightly different. Uh, this area around it in the toe box is quite stretchy. And then the sections here around the midfoot are a bit more rigid. All of that upper kind of varies in terms of thickness and its stretchiness, dependent on which part of the foot it's kind of protecting. It's actually rather clever. When you first put the shoe on, you think, how's this gonna work? How's this gonna fit? But actually all the correct kind of pieces stretch a little bit and it goes on really nicely. I did have two initial areas of concern on my first run though in this shoe related to the upper. As I took a couple of tighter turns, I did feel a little bit of rubbing and discomfort from the ankle type socks that I was wearing. I was using some stance, I think they're called tab socks. And I did feel a little bit of discomfort around here in the heel area on those very tight turns on the kind of the ball of my ankle. So I'd probably suggest some slightly thicker socks, probably gonna get round it, um, or some slightly taller socks, should I say. That'll simply nullify the issue, but it's just something to bear in mind. The second issue that I found with the upper is in fact the lacing. Again, New Balance have employed these almost sort of elasticated type laces within the V10. And I find it makes getting a kind of tailored fit and lockdown across the forefoot a little bit difficult. It's somewhat of a lottery really, because you kind of tighten the shoe up and then tie the laces and you've got to kind of hope that it's right. I did find initially that I'd tightened the shoe too much and then a little later into the run, after I'd re-tightened the shoe, I needed to tighten it back up. So the laces were kind of giving a little bit. I don't think it was anything to do with the upper of the shoe, it's more the laces. They're kind of springy and they just kind of seem to spring back and you think you've got a good lockdown and you haven't, or you've done it too far the other way. And then I just found a little discomfort over the top of the forefoot. It's kind of tough to approximate just how tight the laces are really over the forefoot. I think after that first six mile run, at about mile five, I did have to consider retightening one of the shoes because it was starting to get a little loose. So in terms of the upper, I probably consider giving this maybe a two out of the three. I tend to review things now with the threes, with the categories. I think I'll probably give this a two, mainly due to my concerns with the ability to get that correct tightness and also that little problem I had in the heel area. So let's move on to the midsole now. Now apparently this midsole ha once again has that data driven kind of design. I don't entirely know what they mean by this data-driven design. I'd love to see some of the data that they're using to create these midsoles. 
As you can see, it's quite a considerable midsole here. I love the idea that there are teams of scientists wearing lab coats slaving away over these massive lists of numbers, you know, painstakingly coming up with this midsole construction. I think that's probably just a figment of my imagination though. This is a very highly cushioned shoe and intended for those sort of longer, slower miles. As per usual though, with these midsoles, they look much, much bigger on the outside. When you actually reach into the shoe, you can see that quite a considerable section of this midsole is kind of coming up and around the back of the heel. So don't be fooled by those huge midsoles. Certainly underfoot though, I think the midsole's a little bit more conservative feeling than I thought it was going to be. I think it's an eight mil drop in this shoe, heel to toe, and it's certainly on par with something like the Vaporfly Next Percent. Um, I kind of felt this was more like the New Balance Beacon to me. That's what it really felt like. A kind of a mixture between the Pegasus 35 slash 36 and the New Balance Beacon. So we're not really talking skyscraper type stuff in terms of the stack height here. It's more a three bedroom, semi-detached dwelling, nicely carpeted with a Ortholite insole. Fortunately, it doesn't have that really thin insole that's featured in other New Balance shoes that I've tried out over the last year or so. The Ortholite insole is actually really nice, really cushioned. It reminds me a little bit of the insoles you get again with the Pegasus 35 and 36. I think you also get those Ortholite insoles within Solomon shoes, uh, certainly within the Sense Ride that I tried out last year. Uh, that had a very similar insole to this one. So do I like the foam? Yes, I do. Although I do find it's a little bit of a kind of energy sponge, you know, I kind of was putting some effort into it, certainly within that fartlek session, and I just felt like the shoe doesn't perhaps give back an awful lot of pop. I think it's mainly really a cushioned shoe. Uh, whatever energy you put into it, um, it's gonna kind of absorb a little bit of that energy, but just enable you to keep running rather than kind of adding any sort of propulsive feeling um, to the run. You know, it's, it's a very, very comfortable shoe, but um, not one that I think I'm gonna be doing any considerable paces in. The outsole of the shoe has loads of these kind of rubber spheres. I mean, just everything about this shoe just does aliens to me, everything. And the film Alien, there's pods there, it just kind of looks like a bonkers shoe you might run on the moon in or something. There is a small piece of exposed midsole here, but the rest of it is rubber. Uh, I've got to say I had no real issues in terms of traction. There's not a lot of wet surfaces around at the moment. It's quite dry here in the UK. Uh, but on the tracks and on the paths I was using it on, I felt very, very secure. Great traction. I did try it on a couple of grassy areas where I had to take some evasive action to get around some people and I was slipping and sliding around. So certainly not something you want to go and do your local park run on a field. Avoid that grass. Stay off the grass. I'd say underfoot feels a little similar to the beacon, perhaps a little less responsive because of the foam. So certainly after running recently in the next percent quite a fair bit, this one certainly feels a lot more conventional in terms of its setup. I think this foam is probably more forgiving than boost. Certainly doesn't feel anywhere near as heavy. I think I'd probably prefer this foam over the Rincon. It kind of feels a little bit more inviting, I guess, than the Rincon. Nowhere near as rigid as the Carbon X or anything like that. It's just no comparisons to be made there. I think perhaps this shoe's got more in common with the Nike Infinity Run, actually. Those two, I think, will be a matchup versus video later in the week. So an enjoyable ride, underfoot, midsole and outsole with the 1080 V10. So I think I'll give that a two out of three. So in terms of value, this one clocks in round about the same price as the Nike React Infinity Run. Though I have to be honest, up to now I found with my slightly tired legs from my efforts at the weekend, getting up to that sort of seven minutes 30 kind of steady pace for me, a little bit of a challenge. I found it a little easier to actually to get to that pace in the infinity run earlier in the week, straight after the race. I think those of you that prefer a more snug kind of upper fit will probably enjoy the 1080 V10 more over the infinity run. Though I find that React Infinity Run a far more versatile shoe. This one's certainly gonna be for those longer, slower miles. I've hit some much higher paces in fact in the infinity run back in December when I was reviewing those. I think that shoe just gives a little bit more rebound and feedback to the runner than the 1080 V10. So again, in terms of value, I think at the price point, it's actually a really great shoe. It's very well constructed, very well built, but for value, I'm gonna give it a two out of three. I just don't think it's a shoe I'm probably gonna reach for for tempo runs or any sort of speed workouts. 
So moving on to aesthetics, I personally like the phantom grey, the flame and the yellow slush. Yellow slush? There's only one sort of yellow slush that I can think of and it's not something that I want to get involved in. I think this shoe's nuts. I agree with my daughter Daisy. She said uh, when I first showed her this shoe, I want that shoe. She said, Pap, she always calls me Pap, Pap can you get me a version of this shoe in my size? And I said, maybe if you're good. I think she's right though. I love the look of this shoe. I think aesthetically it looks awesome. It's different. It stands out. It's got character. It's just loads of things I like in the shoe. It's got the old ridiculous elf-like flare here. I don't care if it collects rocks. I'm not fussed about that. I can tip the rocks out. I just love the looks of it. I love the gradient thing here. It reminds me of uh, Microsoft Paint back in the mid 90s. It's got some reflective pieces on here, the New Balance logo and on the top of the tongue. I think it looks great. I'm gonna give it a three out of three for aesthetics. I'm sure some of you will disagree with me, but I, I love it. It's super space age, it's alien. There's a sort of xenomorphic quality about it. I think there's some design cues there, certainly from the 35, maybe the Pegasus 35 Turbo as well. And also with the heel, the Beacon 2. So scores for this one are twos across the board for upper, midsole and outsole and value and a three for looks. So nine out of 12 for this one in terms of my grading, although I've got to get out and some more miles in it. 12 miles up to now, but there'll be lots and lots more over the coming weeks. So I certainly think this one's gonna be a shoe for those longer, slower miles for me. As part of my half marathon training leading up to the oval half marathon at the end of March, I'll be undertaking lots and lots of those longer runs. So this one I think will come in handy. It's certainly a comfortable and accommodating experience. I went in a 11 and a half uh, UK on this one. Typically I fall between like an 11 and an 11 and a half. The 11 and a half in this is absolutely perfect. Uh, really nice fit. Certainly lots of room in the toe box there. Didn't feel it's too narrow across the midfoot area and it's configurable enough in terms of the lacing across the top of the foot. I did go for an 11 in the Rebel, you may have watched my reviews on that already, and that was a little snug for me. Um, so I think with New Balance, I'll stick with the 11 and a half in the future. So, more miles coming up on this one very soon. Thanks for watching through to the end. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you've used the New Balance 1080 V10, um, please comment below and tell me your experiences, good or bad. I'm very keen to see your views and opinions. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button down in the bottom corner here. Please remember to give the video a like and share it with your friends. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.